Hello, I'm Joe Tiarina, Wireless Applications Engineer from ST Microelectronics. Welcome to the LoRaWAN with STM32WL video series. The purpose of it is to demonstrate how to set up your own private LoRaWAN network and explain the process of connecting a gateway and end device to it, and then forward the reported data to an application server in order to visualize, manage, and even control the connected end devices from. The plan is to continue to expand the series in the future to explain other LoRaWAN related topics of interest, so look out for additional videos added to the series. The hardware I'll be using for the gateway and end devices will be based on STM32 development boards. The initial set of videos of the series will be based on the Think Stack network server, but note that you can follow similar steps for connecting to other network servers like Laureat, Actility, Machine Q, or others. Again, look out for upcoming videos in the series showing how to set things up on some of these other network servers. The Things Stack is a powerful LoRaWAN network server managed by the Things Industries. The Things Stack is more scalable, more secure, and supports all the latest LoRaWAN developments compared to its predecessor, the Things Network V2. I'll be using the Community Edition here since it's free to use for the Things Network community members and designed for testing and evaluating LoRaWAN projects. Great for device makers, application developers, and prototype development. Now let's take a look at the software tools, hardware, and firmware needed for the demonstration. These are the software tools you'll need to install. The stm 32 cubewl firmware package, the stm 32 cube ide the stm 32 cube programmer, and a serial terminal program like TerraTerm. With the proper software tools installed now, let's take a look at the hardware I'll be using. I'll be using the PNucleo LRWAN 2 kit for the LoRaWAN gateway. The kit includes two hardware sets for both a LoRaWAN end device and its related gateway. The gateway is made up of a Nucleo STM32 F746 base board plus a rising HF Arduino expansion board. And the other is based on a Nucleo L073RZ plus a iNucleo LRWAN 1 expansion board. However, in this case, we won't be needing the EndNote set of hardware included since we're targeting the STM32WL as the EndNote, so you can put it aside. The Gateway Expansion Board's part number is LRWANGSHF1, and it supports the high frequency band, which is what I need for the 915 MHz band in the US. It is based on the Semtec SX1301 High Performance LoRa baseband processor and the Semtec SX. 1257 transceiver. It supports a packet forward service and provides bi-directional communication with end devices in both Class A and Class C of LoRaWAN protocol. It is compliant with the LoRaWAN specification version 1.0.2 and it supports spreading factors SF12 to SF7 in each of the eight channels. As mentioned earlier, I'll be using the Nucleo WL55 JC1 board as the end device. The Nucleo board is based on the STM32WL55 wireless MCU, which supports LoRa, FSK, MSK, and BPSK modulations, making it suitable for prototyping of end devices based on LoRaWAN, Sigfox, and many other proprietary protocols. But this time, we'll be using the LoRa modulation mode when running our LoRaWAN protocol stack. Now, I'll go over the firmware needed for the gateway and end devices. The PNucleo LoRaWAN gateway board needs to be programmed with the proper firmware. In this case, we want to program it with the Things Network firmware image. The link to the firmware image is available from st.com. Note that the firmware is provided in binary form only and the source code is not made available. Once you connect the Nucleo STM32F7 board to a PC, the board should enumerate as an ST-Link debug device and a virtual COM port device. Also, now would be a good time to make the rest of the necessary connections. Power the blue Rising HF expansion board with a USB cable. With an Ethernet cable, connect the board to a LAN network. Make sure the antenna is connected to the Rising HF board. This one is included with the PNucleo LoRaWAN 2 kit. As mentioned previously, the SC-Link debugger of the F7 Nucleo board should be enumerated as a virtual COM port on the Windows PC. If you open up Windows Device Manager, it should show up like this. 
take a note of the COM port number assigned and select this port from TerraTerm. Then configure the serial port as shown with the baud rate set to 115200, data set to 8 bits, parity none, stop bits 1, and no flow control. Select auto for the new line receive option. Next, I'll open Q Programmer and connect to the F7 Nucleo board through the ST-Link debug port and program the Things Network firmware image I downloaded just a minute ago. Once the firmware is programmed, I'll reset the board to see the boot up log on the serial terminal. Notice the default settings of the firmware image are not the appropriate ones for a US network, so these will have to be reconfigured. We'll cover how to do this in the subsequent video number two, demonstrating how to connect the gateway to the Things Stack network server. Now let's take a look at the end device firmware that will run on the WL Nucleo board. This one can be found in the stm 32 cube WL package. This package can be downloaded from st.com. Once the package is downloaded and installed on the PC, you can find the EndNode project under Projects, Nucleo WL55JC, Applications, LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN EndNode. We will look at this project in further detail in a subsequent video when I go over the necessary code changes that need to be made in order to connect to the LoRaWAN network server. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one where I demonstrate how to set up and connect the gateway board to the ThinkStack network server and set up a Class A LoRaWAN protocol network. Thanks for watching.